Hello guys, in this video I'll show you the DNA results predicted phenotype traits of a Sarmatian. But before uh, we get into this Sarmatian, let's talk about, you know, the failure. Because I promised you guys to give you a, a chimp genome and a uh, Iceman genome. And the chimp genome, yesterday the whole day I was trying to align it. Uh, but, you know, it's what I didn't factor is that it's a chimp, it's not a human. It's got uh, 24 chromosome pairs, com completely different locations for all the variations. So... You know, I didn't factor that in. I was maybe hoping that it would work out, but it didn't work out. I couldn't uh, get you a chimp 23 and me file, which would be sick if I did, but I couldn't get that for you. And when it comes to Iceman, Iceman is having a similar problem. For some reason, I just can't uh, convert it to 23 and me format. So you're not going to see Iceman on my channel. You're not going to see a chimp on my channel. Uh, but you will see other cool stuff, like I'm... Um, working on a Neanderthal genome right now, so you're going to see a Neanderthal, which probably is going to work because I've already did another Neanderthal in the past. To the topic of this Sarmatian, this Sarmatian had uh, brown eyes, or actually dark brown eyes, I circled the wrong thing. He had dark brown eyes, a uh, Greek shaped nose, and black hair, very uh, very sturdy prediction for the hair color, definitely had black hair, there's only 1% likelihood of brown hair and 0% likelihood of blonde or red hair, definitely had black hair. Uh, now with... Um, YSEC, I'm not going to show you the prediction because YSEC actually did not give an eye color prediction for him uh, because he wasn't genotyped for the main variation in BH2 and YSEC is not capable of imputing genotype unlike my tool. My tool is capable of imputing genotype. So my tool is saying he had brown eyes or dark brown eyes. But YSEC is not even capable of giving him an eye color estimate. Uh, with Snipper Free, he's predicted to have brown eyes, um, black uh, hair and intermediate color skin. And your eyes are not lying to you, you are seeing code gen results and pro financing pro, pro variant of DRD2, he had a um, genotype that's GG or CC, which is very typical for non-Europeans. Now, um, actually, as you can see from my previous videos, like the previous seven or eight videos did not have um, code gen results in them because I was thinking that code gen was down and just didn't work, but it turns out all I had to do was clear my cache. In Comte Valmet variant, he had Val Val version, which is a GG, which means he was a warrior with the IO, which is a typical genotype for non-Europeans. And the implications of this genotype is that he had very quick dopamine reuptake, less dopamine in the system, uh, problems with attention and motivation, but however, better stress resiliency. This is what he had in OXTR. Now, this is, um, you could say this is one derived variant in the sociopath gene, but I wouldn't call this the sociopath gene because you can see it's very common. It's 35.8% uh, of code gen users have this genotype. He did not have the European lactose persistence mutation and was most likely lactose intolerant. As are most samples I've looked at on this channel, um, he actually had the European uh, mutation that protects against myopia, which is pretty cool. Um, now, he this is the variant in MC1R that he had, which I mentioned in previously. If you go to the first slide about appearance, uh, basically this is a red hair carrier uh, genotype. He is heterozygous hair. If he had, if otherwise he had like light pigmentation genes, he would be predicted to have red hair with my tool. But because he had very dark pigmentation genes like it Herc2, Oka2, uh, and other variants, because he had very dark pigmentation, it's very unlikely that he would have red hair. However, he was a carrier for it. Moving on to polygenic risks, um, polygenic traits, I'm sorry. He had a high uh, likelihood of type 2 diabetes, a above average likelihood of Parkinson's disease. He had an above average, actually very high likelihood of bipolar disorder. Uh, he had a pretty below average uh, risk score for schizophrenia and a very, very low risk score for type 1 diabetes. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Uh, of course, you guys, it's YouTube. You want me to provide commentary and be all energetic and talk about it. Uh, but I'm tired. I'm tired of talking about this. I've had, I've made like uh, five videos on different Sarmatians already. This is the same result over and over again. It's just mostly West Asian, followed by some European. Like, this is nothing surprising. And with the Oracle, he's closest to Tabasarans and Tajiks. Uh, Tabasarans are in Dagestan, and he can be modeled as a mixture of basically Tabasarans plus Swedish or like Irish or... Uh, there is also Seventh Line, which is Swedish plus Baloch, so basically not a Northern European, uh, more like a mixture of something from uh, the Western Asia plus Northern Europe. This is what he scores with MDLPK16. Um, is there anything interesting here? Maybe there is something interesting, because I'm seeing him score 0.2% Ancestor. Uh, if my memory serves me right, this is the category that Neanderthal individual that I ran for this calculator scored. So maybe this is a little bit of like Neanderthal admixture. Kind of interesting to, interesting piece of trivia. And he's closest to people from Badakhshan 
and he can be modeled as a mixture of like Badakhshan plus Scottish or Arcadian or Icelandic. Um, this actually does kind of contradict the G25 because with G25 uh, he's getting modeled as a mixture of something from Tajikistan plus like Northeast European instead of Northwest, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, this is what he scores with Harappa World. Uh, this result is actually more canonically accurate. We'll we'll move into it later uh, when we look at the Oracle. But here he's mostly scoring Northeast European, and out of the West Asian components, he's mostly scoring Baloch, uh, 26.16% Baloch. So this is the, like the CHG slash uh, Iranian Neolithic component. With the Oracle, he's closest to Tajiks, and he can be modeled as a mixture of, among other things, Tajiks plus Lithuanians or Tajiks plus Russians, or I'm actually seeing line 20 here, uh, Tajik plus Finnish, which is exactly what this individual scores with G25. This is the result in Pandiana LK10. Uh, the biggest category here is CHG at 37%, uh, which is once again, to anybody who thinks that Sarmatians were like Northern Europeans, no Northern European is gonna score 37% CHG on this calculator, it doesn't happen. Uh, with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Chechens plus Mardvins or like Lesgins plus Chuvash. Um, so the reason he's getting modeled as Lesgins or Chechens instead of Tajiks is because this Oracle literally does not have Tajik samples. It's just it's just either Chechens, Lesgins or Pashtuns. It doesn't have Tajiks as a reference. And this is what he scores with Pond DNA LK12. Uh, the dominant component, the biggest component here is Caucasus HG. Uh, once again, this is very different from typical Northern European result. Uh, about 15% Caucasus more than typical for Northern Europeans. Uh, he's got a little bit of Sub-Saharan actually, which is interesting. And with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Tajik plus like Croatian or Hungarian, which is very interesting, you know, because this is also different from G25 because G25 is modeling as Tajik plus Finnish. And this is his result with Ancient Eurasia K6 by Gidrosia. But interestingly, this is a little bit less southern than I expected. He's only scoring 28% Natufian, uh, which is less than me and I'm Russian. Uh, but, you know, he's got 33% Ancestral North Eurasian. That's the biggest component here, A&E. Uh, it's also the biggest component in modern Tajik South Central Asians and the rest. And it can be modeled as a mixture of, among other things, Early Middle Bronze Age Steppe plus Yemenite or Egyptian. So it's more like Mediterranean, I guess, than early Middle Bronze Age step. Here is what he scores with the uh, Gedrosia K3. Guys, I wasn't paying attention to the like the East, Eur East Eurasian categories on other calculators, so I don't know how much of this East Eurasian is from Siberia. You can literally pause the video, go back and see. Uh, but from my from my guessing, it's probably mostly from ancient North Eurasian admixture and not from any like recent East Eurasian admixture. And with Eurogenes K36, he's mostly scoring North Caucasus, uh, South Central Asian, but he's also scoring some like uh, Northern European components such as North Sea and Eastern European. Uh, interestingly, he's only scoring 6% Fennoscandian, so I don't know why G25 is modeling this person as specifically Finnish plus Tajik. Anyway guys, yeah, this was a very interesting DNA file to analyze. Uh, of course, you can like comment suggestions for other videos that I should do, but you know, just please don't comment like Sarmatians. I'm tired of Sarmatians. I don't want to do Sarmatians anymore. Uh, but um, the link to download this file in 23andMe format will be in the description. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.